If you consistently grip French style with your thumbs up on the sticks, you may want to reconsider. Today I'm showing you why this is, and most importantly what you should do instead, but I'll also show you some interesting exceptions where French grip works really well. But we're digging into grip style today and how to get the most rebound, how to get the most fluidity around the kit, and get speed and versatility, all that good stuff, so let's get into it. The reason I'm making a video on this topic, the reason I'm addressing this today is because I've actually been surprised to see how many of my students, my one-on-one -on -one coaching students are gripping this way with their thumbs on top. And the common trend I'm seeing among students doing this is that they're not getting enough rebound and they're not getting enough power. And so the thing is, you know, with French grip, it's very easy for this to happen when you're playing where you know that the stick is supposed to bounce up but it's very difficult to get it to bounce up with this grip because there's some catches basically to making this work. And it's also hard to play very loud and to actually feel comfortable doing it. And so because of that, I, I wanna dig into this and share with you really the, the dangers of using this as a primary grip on the drum set. But we are gonna talk about an application where it does work really well. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the grip that I would like you to switch to, if this is you, that really is gonna serve you better in the long run. So if you're new to the drums, you're new to all this terminology, mumbo jumbo about French or German or American, maybe you've heard of these things. Those are the three matched grips, matched meaning both of our hands are doing the same thing. Those are the three primary matched grips that we use. If we're doing German, we're playing with our palms down. It's very stiff like this. And it's actually very wrist driven, very wrist driven versus French, which is hands toward right here, thumbs on top, very light, loose, delicate, then there's American, which is kind of an in-between, where it's not a strict palms down wrist driven, but it's kind of a best of both worlds, where we're not French, we're not German, we're kind of in between. It ends up looking about like that. That's the grip I want you to use, because that's gonna be more versatile. So the cons of French grip, there's really two big ones, and this is worth switching, in my opinion. This is why I'll tell my students to switch, like, hey, it's great if you can do, if you can do French well, because there is an application for it that we're gonna get to in a minute. But a big issue is that they're not getting the rebound. So in order to get a lot of rebound from French grip, you have to literally not even be pressing down with your thumb. If there's any pressure from your thumb on top, this is what happens. Where the stick just kind of floats here, it almost wants to do this and play a double. And even then, that double, there's not a lot of stick height. It's not a big open double. It's a very choked down double, which is rarely going to serve us well. And so in order to get that rebound, we have to be so loose with the thumb here that the stick is able to bend up to here, basically floating up toward the end of the thumb. Which feels a little bit unnatural, like you're about to lose control because you're having to be so loose. So that leads to the second con of this, which is that you're not able to get a lot of power because when you're hitting hard, you feel like the stick is just gonna totally fly out just like that and you're gonna lose control over it. Plus, when you're playing heavily this way with your thumb on top, if you're playing rim shots, I know I'm playing a rim shot here on my pass, I can be talking while I'm doing it, but if I were doing an actual rim shot on the snare, and even when I'm doing it on this pad, I'm feeling the shock of the stick hitting the pad going up into my hand because of this, this point right here. Because the stick is staying right here between my thumb and index finger. It's staying right there, so I'm feeling all of the energy of the shock of the stick. And if I'm loose enough to not feel it, the stick is flipping back so far that it's just getting out of hand. And so this whole French thing, thumbs on top thing, works okay when you're playing very lightly, but as you get louder, it really doesn't work so well. And something that also doesn't work so well is playing this way lightly, then transitioning to here, because there's kind of a weird crossover point that's also very tricky. If you're going from this to this, it kind of does that wiggle. And so you don't wanna be switching back and forth between the two constantly. You really wanna find something you can settle on that'll work for every dynamic and every speed. Now, the pros of French grip. I'm actually a big fan of this one. When you're playing on the ride, especially if you're playing jazz, thumb on top is very natural. It feels great because you're on the right side of your kit. Think about this. If we wanna navigate fluidly around the kit, it's way easier to do a wrist twist motion than it is to go like this. So if I'm maintaining the same grip as I go from left to right, I'm having to move my whole forearm, like to put, twist my arm here. That's a lot to move and that's not a totally comfortable motion either. 
But if I can be a little more palms down on the snare and then flip to a thumbs up on the ride, I can just twist back and forth, which is great. Same thing applies with the left hand. I'm going back and forth between my two toms here. I can just twist like this. And so a lot of the aspects of kit navigation become a lot easier when you allow yourself to do this sort of fluid grip where you're just twisting your arms. And so if I were going from floor tom to the hi-hat with the left hand, same thing. That's naturally going to happen where I go to thumbs up as I go to my left. But my default grip on the snare is going to be pretty much an American grip still that works well for every dynamic. And especially if I'm playing rim shots where I don't want to feel the shock of the stick, it's going to be better to be more palms down. Now, French does work well when you're playing lightly, especially when playing on cymbals. I think any light cymbal playing, it feels very natural just to be. There's just something very like fluid and floating, you know, like you're floating through the clouds that something about thumbs on top, it just, it kind of creates that feeling. It's easier to play that way when you're feeling that rather than playing this way. Which honestly, when I'm doing that, I, I get stiffer up here. And so I kind of get into like a weird stiff mindset. It's easier to stay loose on cymbals, thumbs up. So pros of French grip, playing lightly, especially on cymbals. When you're moving to the right side of the kit with your right hand and maybe left side of the kit with your left hand too. I think more often it is right hand on the right. That's where I love being French. And that's because I can just bounce the stick. using more of my fingers and that works great. I'm not feeling any shock from the stick because I'm not hitting hard. I'm just gently bouncing the stick off the cymbal. So French works great for that. Also, French grip can be used for working out your fingers because you wanna have strong, agile fingers no matter your grip. And so this exercise right here, this is a French grip exercise. A lot of times I'll just refer to this with my students as the French grip exercise. This is when we wanna use French grip to work out the fingers where you're just using your fingers to drive the stick. where thumb is staying on top, pivoting between thumb and index finger. You're just using your fingers to propel the stick. No wrist, no arm, just the fingers. And this is the best grip to use to do that. Now you can translate that into an American grip where you're basically going like this. And you're opening and closing your hand. So you're doing the same thing, but it's easier to get started with that when you're going this way. I've got another video, past video, where I go more in depth with this particular exercise. So you can check that out in the description. But know that French grip is a great way to get started with this. So that then you can switch to a more American grip. And as you get faster, you can transition. You know, if you're going really slow and hard, you can use some arm. But then transition to wrist. All the while, fingers are following the stick as the stick moves within your hand. Then as you get faster, especially if you're going a little quieter, then you're transitioning to pure fingers. In order to do that, you've got to put in some practice doing this. And so those fingers really come in handy. And so that's a practical use of French grip, strengthening the fingers. Now, let's go into a little more detail about the American grip, because I told you that's the grip I want you to use primarily, especially when you're playing on the snare, when you're hitting drums and when you're hitting hard, you want to be doing more of a palms down grip. And here's why. Stick with me here, because this is important. This is key. This has worked great for me, and it works well for my students, because it allows you to not feel the shock of the drum. Like sometimes, so practice pads, for example, sometimes when you hit a hard practice pad, you feel, uh, you feel the energy of the stick go into your hand, uh, which isn't really realistic at all. It's just some practice pads are super hard. This one, this is an Aquarian Super Pad, and I think it feels great. It's one of my favorite pads. Quick, uh, non-official endorsement of Aquarian Super Pads. But you might notice when you're hitting certain hard pads that really spring your stick out, you feel that shock in your hand. And if that's happening, that actually means you're not gripping as loose as you should. Because if you're gripping loosely, doing this American grip, where we have the best of both worlds, remember, we're palms down like German, but rather than the stick being positioned this way, we're pointing it a little more in the direction of our arm. So instead of being like this, a little more fluid like this, and really our first knuckle of our index finger, that's what's on top here. Rather than palm being level, this is the high part here. Thumb doesn't move. The stick moves independent of the thumb, and it moves within this space we're forming in our hand. You can actually form the fulcrum with thumb and middle finger in order to have some more space here. 
practice just dropping the stick, letting it fall like that. The index finger can be kind of like a guardrail, they kind of like a, a guiding function. Or you could use the, the index as your pivot. Doesn't matter, whatever feels most comfortable to you. But the point is be loose and open. And because this is so loose, because you've got the stick resting just in an open, loose hand, that means you can hit hard, like play a rim shot, and the energy of the stick goes back out the butt end. Your hand doesn't feel it. It's way easier to play loudly and loosely with this grip than it is with French. French, you end up having to get too tight because you're gonna lose the stick when you're playing loudly. And so as you get louder, you end up having to adjust your grip. But with this grip, with this American grip, I can play lightly, have my fingers wrapped around, you know, guiding the stick. So I'm playing from my wrist at this tempo. If I were going really fast, I could be playing more from my fingers. But if I'm going this tempo, I could be using my wrist. And then as I get louder, I can start opening up my hand. All the while, this is that same American grip where this is the top of the grip. We're not stiff this way, we're not thumbs on top. And in between, our thumb is on the side. It's really the side of the thumb that we're using on the stick. And actually, the louder we get, the looser we want to be. Sounds counterintuitive, but we want to have our hand even more and more open with fingers extending to allow the rebound as we're getting louder so that we have this crazy amount of almost exaggerated rebound as we practice this. As we get faster, it's okay to tighten down a little bit. As I'm getting faster, this is what my hand ends up looking like. I'm gradually closing this space a little bit. I'm going slow and hard, like slow and loud. This is how loose things are. But as I go faster, I do tighten up a little bit because the stick does have a tendency to slide out. But make sure your hands are clammy. <laughs> Breathe on them, put on some lotion, spill some soda on your palms, whatever you gotta do to keep them sticky so that you can stay as loose as possible. Because the way this grip works, you're loose, but your fingers are in contact with the stick, moving with it. The butt end is making contact with your palm every time it goes down. So if you've got some sweat in your hands, that's gonna provide just enough friction to help you grip well while staying loose. That's the whole point here. So I hope you see the versatility here. I hope you see how you can sit here and play like this with sort of a firm grip for playing lightly and slowly or using fingers more if you're playing quickly and lightly or as you're getting louder, for keeping things loose. All this time, I'm not changing my grip. I'm just changing how loosely or tightly I'm gripping according to how far the stick needs to move. And then the only time I'm gonna change my grip around the kit is if I'm going to the right side and I wanna play more of a French on the cymbals and do kind of a light kind of flowy thing on the cymbals. But pretty much on the drums, I'm always gonna be this hybrid American kind of grip. Because remember, German is palms down, wrist, French is thumbs up, fingers, but American combines fingers with wrist to give you power, finesse, dynamic range, pretty much all of that stuff, best of both worlds. I don't even know if an American drummer created that or if it was just the drummers in the US started doing that at some point. So regardless of where you live, regardless of whether or not you're American, I have students all over the place, uh, use whichever grip you want to. If you live in France, it's okay to use American. If you live in Germany, it's totally fine because these grips have their strengths. And so we're combining the best of them. We're combining the brilliance of the French and the Germans and the Americans to create a hybrid grip that works well. And so that, that's the idea here. We wanna pick and choose the, the best aspects of each. And by the way, traditional, <laughs> talking about other grips, traditional is not a grip that I'm a fan of just because number one, I never learned it. Uh, my drum set teacher believed it wasn't practical anymore. It's something that you can learn if you think it's cool. If you wanna learn traditional, fine, go for it. But there's nothing that you can play with traditional that you can't play matched. So it's not like you're gaining any superpower, any extra abilities by playing traditional. It's just another thing to have to learn and deal with, in my opinion. I've never, I've never spent a lot of time practicing it. I can fake my way through it. I would always rather do matched. And so if you're wanting to learn traditional, that's not something I'm gonna teach you on this channel. You gotta find somebody out there who maybe is more into jazz, who considers himself a specifically a jazz drummer or a rudimental drummer who's mastered that. But that's something I don't believe you need to learn or spend time with. But if you wanna pursue that, you can do that online, just not here. <laughs> but here's the overarching thing. When, whenever we're talking about grip, I always want you to land here on the fact that the overarching goal here is that you wanna have loose, relaxed rebound. We've got all this loose, free rebound that you can just do. In your sleep, any dynamic, any speed, 
all while being fluid, relaxed, comfortable, and pain-free. That's important, pain-free. No shock of the sticks going into joints, no arthritis going on. If you're pain-free and you're getting that rebound, great. It doesn't matter so much exactly what you're doing, whether or not you're imitating me or not, as long as you're reaching those two things, those two goals. Here's your action step. I want you to ask yourself this question. I'm, I'm asking you, are you able to do everything that you want to do and everything you want to play on the drums with the grip you're currently using? Are you able to reach your speed goals, your volume goals? Are you able to play and play without getting tired? If not, you might want to consider changing your grip. And maybe if you're already doing an American kind of thing, but you're new to this, like you haven't been playing a whole lot, you might just need to build up the strength, build up the stamina, build up the technique so that you can do it longer. So there might be nothing wrong with what you're doing from a form standpoint. But if you've been playing for a long time and you're working out your hands every day and you're doing this stuff, but you're stuck and you're not reaching your goals and you can't get past whatever speed, can't get past whatever volume, your rebound's only going to here and it's not going up to here, that's where you need to evaluate how you're gripping because that's probably the, the actual core issue. And without fixing that, you're not gonna fix the other things. And so go to square one and start with this, use the American grip, do exactly what I'm showing you here. Uh, whether or not you believe me that it's gonna work really well, know that it will, be patient, and give it a shot. Give it a try. You're gonna find that it leads to a lot of fruit in your playing. <laughs> it leads to a big harvest of, of skills that are gonna make you more comfortable and more able to play fluidly. So take my word for it, practice this, and as an additional action step, go download my totally free PDF e-guide called the Fast Fluid Hands Checklist. We break down exactly what I've shown you today in even more step-by-step -step detail, so clearly laid out for you that you know exactly what to practice. That's a big deal. Something that I hear so often is I'm hitting these roadblocks in my playing and I feel like I don't really know exactly what to practice to overcome them. And a lot of times it's simple. You know, when you're learning online, it's tough. I, I get it that maybe through COVID you couldn't take lessons or maybe you've gotten back into the drums at some point in COVID. You're learning online, you're watching this channel. That's awesome. I'm proud of you for doing that and for taking that initiative. I understand your pain where you feel like you're not quite doing things right or you're not sure the exact steps to do it. And so you feel like that's holding you back from progress. I know that that represents so many of you guys. So I wanna help you with this. That's why I created this guide. Uh, I believe it's gonna give you a lot of clarity. Clarity is good. Clarity and practicing is great, especially if you don't have a teacher sitting next to you to show you these things. So step one in the guide is doing this, you know, dropping the stick, getting that free bounce. Uh, each page of the guide is a step. This is a four step process. Each page is a step. We've got photos. I, I did like sports photography photos of my hand in progress playing, playing the stuff we're talking about. So you can see exactly what it looks like, read exactly what the step is. Here's what I want you to do. Here are the action steps, implement these. And so step by step, you're learning the, the basics of loose grip so that whatever stage you're at in your playing, whether you're beginner or advanced, in a way you're going back to square one, you're resetting, but you're making sure to learn the right foundation so that you're not running into trouble later. That's important. So if you wanna make sure you're holding the sticks right for long-term success and you wanna make sure you're eliminating the weak hand, this is the guide for you. This is the method for you. Download it, take it to your practice room. We talk about a bunch of stuff like using the power of your fingers to build speed and control like I showed you today. How can we better utilize the fingers? How can we have more rebound, use the fingers for more rebound and for more control and for more speed and power uh, so that you can play your favorite songs with ease. Fluidly navigating around the kit, that's the big goal, that's the end goal. Hand technique is a means to an end. We wanna be able to perform well, to feel at home behind the kit, to fluidly navigate around the kit, to nail our doubles, all these great things, and it starts right here. So download the guide. You'll know the exact core steps to do this. I also threw in some speed building uh, tips and techniques. So we've got four steps plus some bonus steps to really build up strength and build up speed, especially if you're new to this and you're trying to figure out how can I play without getting tired? This is, this is essential. This is really, really important and very helpful. So go download the guide. I guarantee you it's gonna help you out. Get that, that resource in your hands. So if you put in the work, but in the practicing, you're gonna reap some big rewards that carry across your playing, across the board, and everything else you're gonna practice. Uh, I promise you that. I can confidently say that because it works for me, works for my students. I've seen so many drummers improve their playing, like every area of their playing, just by working on hand technique. So this is good stuff, go check it out. Hey, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe before you go. So glad to have you. I'm glad you hung out with me today and stuck with me through this lesson, absorbing these tips and skills. I hope you're now gonna go implement these things in your practicing, take them and run with them. 
Know that you can do it. You are capable of success on the drums. Know that, know that you are capable of success. When you've got the right tools, you've got the curiosity, the work ethic, the discipline, you're gonna grow. There's nothing holding you back. There's no lack of talent, lack of talent that's gonna hold you back. If you have work ethic and you have the right resources, that's all you need. You can become a great drummer. Know that, know that you can become a great drummer. I hope to encourage you in that direction and push you to your practice room to learn this stuff because you can do it. So thanks everyone. I'll see you on the next video. Stay non-glamorous.